Hi, Grace and friends, it's Ms. Werman again. I'm really glad to be here for more story time. Today, I'm gonna to share a story with you from Tahiti. It's called Rona Long Teeth. And Tahiti is an island, a beautiful tropical island area that is um, a long way from here in the South Pacific. I'll try to get a picture that I can put up or at least a link that you can see down below in the links um, so you can see where Tahiti is. So, Rona Long Teeth, a story from Tahiti. <clears throat> Chapter one, the monster's daughter. On the island of Tahiti, there once lived an evil monster. Her name was Rona Longteeth. She knew many powerful spells and her heart was dark and evil. Let's see here. There she is. Rona Longteeth's home was a little hut in a clearing among the banana trees. She lived there with her baby daughter, Hina, now Hina was kind and good. She was always smiling and singing and always helpful to everyone she met. And she did not know that her mother was a monster. Oops, I'm sorry. I turned the page and I should show you the picture of her. <clears throat> That's the little house on the beach where they lived together. Rona Longteeth loved her daughter dearly. Every day, she would rub the little girl's skin with sandalwood oil to make it soft and sweet. Every day, she would comb Hina's long, dark hair until it shone like water. Every day, she would smooth the tips of Hina's fingers until they were more slender and delicate than any fingers you have ever seen. There they are together. You see Hina saying, thank you, mom. <clears throat> Rona Longteeth fed Hina with the best mangoes and pineapples so her daughter would grow up strong and healthy. She caught the fattest crabs on the reef and cooked their sweet meat for her daughter. As the years passed, the monster's child grew up. She was a beautiful young woman, but even though she loved Hina, Rona Longteeth felt nothing for the people on the island. When the moon was full, she would creep from hut to hut and carry off the juiciest young human she could find to eat. The island people hated the wicked she monster. They were terrified of her pointy teeth and her nighttime visits. Look, people on the island in their houses going, oh no. Hina knew nothing of her mother's evil ways. If she ever woke in the night and found her mother gone, she simply thought Rona Longteeth had gone fishing for crabs in the moonlight. She looks like she's plotting something, doesn't she? She does make me nervous. Hmm, I would be nervous too if I lived on that island and I knew she ate people, my goodness. Chapter two, the secret cave. On the same island, there lived a young man whose name was Monoy. One night, Monoy decided he could not bear to live in fear of Rona Longteeth any longer. He ran to a special place he knew where there was a high cliff beside a pool with palm trees going all around it. There was a cave in the cliff and Monoy hid there. There he is running away from his house. He says, I can't stay here. He laid bark mats down to make the cave floor soft and dry. Then he sang a special charm song which helped him roll a big rock in front of the cave so no one could see it from the outside. When he wanted to leave the cave to find food or breathe the clear morning air, he would sing the charm song again and the rock would open. There he is. See him behind there? He's in the cave and he's got the rock there that's gonna cover it up so nobody can find him. It so happened that the pool with the palm trees all around was Hina's favorite place to swim. One day, Manoy saw her in the swimming pool. He fell head over heels in love with her. He forgot his fear and climbed down the cliff to talk to her. Here we see her, she's in the, swimming in the pool with the palm trees around it. Monoy was kind and handsome. Hina fell in love with him at once. They sat by the pool, singing songs and telling jokes, but Monoy would not tell Hina where he lived. I know your mother is Rona Longteeth, Monoy said. If she knows where I am, she might come and eat me. Here he is telling her, he says, I love you. They're in love. Hina had no idea that Rona Longteeth ate human beings. She was very upset. She promised she would never tell her mother where Monoy lived. 
So Monoy showed her his secret cave and told her he would always come out if she stood outside and called to him. There's a picture of her leaving the cave and she's saying, I'll come back tomorrow. Chapter three, the picnic. The very next day, as soon as Rona Longteeth had gone out to fish for their supper, Hina packed a basket full of food. Then she ran down to the bottom of the cliff and sang, here's your friend, come out and have fun. Push open the rock and we'll dance in the sun. And there she is with a picnic basket. From inside the cave, Monoy answered, where is your mother with her teeth sharp and long? Answer me that and I'll sing the charm song. She's on the long reef. She's on the short reef. She's catching crabs for the two of us to eat, sang Hina. So there they are. She's trying to make sure he knows that it's really her. And he's trying to make sure it really is her because he's so afraid of Rona Longti. Then Monoy sang the charm song and came hurrying out of the cave. The two of them played together all morning. And when the sun was high in the sky, they sat by the water and ate the picnic that Hina had brought. My heart belongs to you, Monoy said to Hina. I'll love you forever. So he comes out of the cave and then see they're having a picnic together and just kind of gazing at each other because they're so happy to be together. Then as the sun started to sink lower in the sky, he climbed back into his hiding place. Hina hurried away. She got home just before Rona Longteeth came back with a basket full of crabs. Now she's racing to get back in the house. But Rona was clever. She noticed how much food was missing from the hut. Where has all our food gone? She muttered to herself. Hina has eaten like a little pig today. Something odd is going on here and I shall find out what it is. She's nervous now that something weird is going on. She's gonna be sure she gets to the bottom of it. The very next morning, the crafty monster hugged her belly and moaned softly. Then she lay down. I don't feel well, she groaned. I think I will stay here and sleep until I feel better. My poor old legs are too weak to walk to the reef today. She lay still and then began to snore. You see her? She says, I feel sick. I think she might not actually be sick. This might be a trick. Let's find out. Hina wanted to see Monoy again very badly. As soon as she heard her mother begin to snore, she packed a picnic basket and ran to the cliff. Look, it says, I must see Monoy again. But Rona Longteeth was only pretending to be asleep. Quickly, she jumped up and crept behind Hina to see where she went. She saw her go to the pool with the palm trees all around. So there's the rest of the picture. Now you can see Rona Longteeth. See how she's got one eye open? She's peeking to see where Hina goes. She watched Hina singing and Monoy jumping out from the cave. Rona Longteeth was furious. Her blood boiled and she ground her teeth in rage. Young he looks and tasty too, she snarled to herself. I shall eat him up by and by. And that's what Rona Longteeth saw, right? The cave and the rock and Hina there with him. Chapter four, a midnight feast. That night, Rona said to her daughter, Hina dear, I'm feeling much better tonight. I think I will go fishing by torchlight and when I get back, we can have an early breakfast of breadfruit, yams, and some delicious fresh fish. I'm so glad you're better, mother, replied Hina with a smile. Fresh fish for breakfast will be very nice. There she is sneaking around. Off Rona went, tiptoeing through the dark until she came to Monoy's cave. She stood outside the cave and sang as sweetly as she could. Here is your friend, come out and have fun. Open the rock and we'll dance all night long. There she is trying to trick him to come out behind that rock. But Monoy was not fooled. You are not Hina, he shouted. You're Rona Longteeth and I'm not coming out. Rona did not care. She was a powerful monster and she was a magician too. She knew lots of spells. She knew a magic word that would open the cave. There he is. No! He 
He does not want to come out. I don't blame him. Vaya! She screamed, and the rock cracked open with a sound like thunder. In rushed the she-monster. The teeth in her mouth grew longer and longer, and suddenly there were fangs all over her body, on her chin, on her elbows, on her knees, on her back. Her whole body was covered in big, sharp teeth. She opened her mouth wide, and before Mona could even squeak, Rona Longteeth had gobbled him up every last bit. Every last bit, that is, except his heart. Look at her. That is a big mouth. No wonder she gobbled him all up so quickly. And look, all the little teeth all over her. Oh, that is very creepy. His heart belonged to Hina. It hid itself behind a rock. Then Rona Longteeth went off to catch fish at the reef. Hina was fast asleep in their hut, but when Rona Longteeth ate up Monoi, her heart gave a terrible lurch. She knew something awful had happened. She ran to the cliff and saw that the rock had been broken in two. She ran inside the cave. It was empty and dark. Then she heard Monoi's voice from coming from a corner of the cave. It was actually his heart calling out to her. Hina ran to the cave and found the heart. She picked it up and ran home. So there's Rona Longteeth leaving and Hina looking in the cave. And do you see the heart? It's that little tiny red dot down there, right down there. His heart was hiding and waiting for her to come find it. Chapter five, breakfast. When Hina got home, Monoi's heart told her what to do. Find the leaf of a banana tree that is almost as tall as you are and cut it down, whispered the heart. Lay it on your sleeping mat and put a coconut where your head would be. Then cover everything up with your blanket. When Hina had done all this, it looked just as if she was still fast asleep in her bed. There she is. I must be quick, she sang. Now, said Monai's heart, you must go as quickly as you can to Chief Noah. Tell him everything that has happened tonight and ask him to get his spear ready. Hina ran across the dark island as fast as her legs could carry her. It's dark. I hope her plan works. Oh, wait, see this right here? See how it's a coconut? It's not really her head. Let's see if I can get that closer. There we go. And the blanket. She's trying to trick her mother, I think. In the very early morning, just before dawn, Rona Longteeth came home with a basket full of fresh fish. She called out to Hina, but the shape in the bed did not stir. Ah, poor child, she's tired out, said Rona Longteeth. She lit a small fire. After an hour, she called, Hina, come and sing to me while I cook our breakfast. But the shape in the bed did not stir. See the shape in the bed? That's still the coconut right there with a the blanket over it. That would be why it didn't stir because it's not a real person. Ah, poor child, I'll let her sleep a little longer, muttered the wicked she monster. When the fish were cooked to a crisp, Rona Longteeth called out, Hina, get up, your breakfast is ready. But still, the shape in the bed did not stir. Rona Longteeth went over to the bed and pulled the soft cloth off the bed. So there she was cooking the breakfast fish. And then she went and pulled off the blanket. When she saw the coconut and banana leaf lying on Hina's sleeping mat, she was filled with rage. She knew she had been tricked. She says, it's a trick. As the sun rose, Rona Longteeth roared across the island. Where is Hina? She screamed. Where has my daughter gone? The people on the island were terrified, but they stood bravely outside their huts and pointed to Chief Noah's house. Rona Longteeth ran in through the door. There she is looking everywhere. Look at that, outside the hut. And again, she went back to the cave where the rock was, right? To look for her. When she saw her daughter there, the teeth in her mouth grew longer and longer. And suddenly there were fangs all over her body, on her chin, on her elbows, on her knees and her back. Her whole body was covered with big, sharp teeth. She opened her mouth wide. Ah. Bad things happen when she opens her mouth that big. But Chief Noah had his spear ready and just before Rona could close her jaws and gobble Hina up, the chief stuck his spear into the she-monster and killed her. 
Then Chief Noah gave Monoi's heart to his best enchanter. The enchanter made a new body for Monoi and set the heart inside it. Look at that. He's yelling, look out! Boy, she really did get close to eating her up, right? She didn't get her. Monoi and Hina fell into each other's arms and the chief married them at once. And now that Rona Longteeth was dead and gone, everyone on the island lived in peace and harmony for the rest of their days. And there they are together. And it says, we're so happy. The end. So that was Rona Longteeth. And see, it's from a series called Monster Stories. And all the monster stories on these book in these books are from different countries around the world. So this one was from Tahiti, and there's one from I think Italy, and another one from North America, and I think there's one from Chile. So I think while I'm doing story times, I think I'll probably read all of those to you at some point. And I hope you really enjoy them. Have a great day, and it was so good to read to you again. I'll see you next time. Bye.